We had a crane, a very, very big crane that went up and, and came down, and we put her in a harness. Hi, Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a Look at that, that's smart. Right. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Okay. Okay, how's that feel? Oh, here, special ah. legs Jacqueline loved being in the harness. She was like, but the thing about Jacqueline that I remember really well is that she read constantly. She read as much as Matilda. She read a lot of books. <laughs> that looks sensational. You okay, Jacqueline? That looks sensational. Wow. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna shout down jelly beans? That's what she wants us to stop. Yeah. Yes. Action. We had special braids made, right, so that we could swing her around in a wide shot. We, like, popped out, and we had to glue them back on. Everybody's horrified. Was she good or what? You are flying, kiddo. You are flying. <laughs> I can't believe it. Laugh. No jelly beans. No jelly beans, jelly beans, beans babe. No jelly beans. No jelly beans. <laughs> I think my biggest challenge on Matilda was making Pamela Ferris, who is a lovely woman, look like the mean trunch bull. Ah, fresh meat. We took a face cast of her and um, made some pieces for her out of gelatin. We made her a nose tip. And we also made her eye bags, so it made her look a little older and more tired. That in there. Give a real a cruel look. I can't scrunch my eyes up because they're still wet at the moment, so I have to stay fairly. But once they're dry and in place, you can they're just like skin. But I'm not aware of this at all. This is amazing. Use the rod, beat the child. That's my motto. The next step uh, we did to Pam was I started coloring in um, all of her like little imperfections on her face, like freckles. I put a lot of broken blood vessels. Like you, sometimes you'll see somebody has like a little vein on her face. Well, I drew in hundreds of those. And then I took kind of a coloring wand, like a mascara wand, and I colored in all the peach fuzz on her face, which gave her a little bit of a mustache and a little bit of a beard. And I darkened her eyebrows. Wow. There she goes. It's like a cornfield after a storm, isn't it? We painted the teeth with kind of like a tobacco stain kind of a color um, that just kind of gave them a little bit of a yellowy edge to them. Pamela was really great about us letting us do whatever we wanted to do to her to really get her into that trench bull character look. It's delicious. When you see the end result, it's so uh, detailed and believable that I can look in the mirror and I believe it. When Pam came into the trailer in the morning, she was just Pam Ferris, and when she left, she was a trench bull, and I helped her achieve that. It was really, really a fun scene to do. He ate a lot of cake. We made big, huge, wonderful cakes. Mm. They must have filmed that for two weeks. I remember, oh, whenever, when the rest of us would go home, the children in the classroom stuff, we'd go home. Pam and Bruce would come back and they would film that cake scene. Mm. Mm. I saw that little boy pass me sometimes looking terribly green about the gills and I thought, what's wrong with him? And I didn't realize he'd been out there eating piece after piece of cake. Now, is she in his light? Not now. Yeah, I was, wasn't I? Okay, not anymore. Okay. Wait, go out, Pam, room. back out. Let him spit, wait, I'm sorry, cut, cut. This is really gross, okay? 
I'm going to tell you anyway. What we used to, what we did with Bruce Bogtrotter is we made him stuff his face, but then I would cut the camera. Okay, cut. Let him spit. Cut. Don't wipe his mouth, Going though. Right away. He would spit it out because if he would have eaten all that cake, he would have, he really exploded. I'm telling you, it was so big. It was so much cake. And the cake was good, too. I had a lot of it. Mm -mm. It was really, really uh, a fun scene to do. There's always a trick. There's always some kind of, like when Matilda makes the, the, the uh, Miss Honey, the first time she shows Miss Honey her powers, she's able to make that pitcher rise. There was a pitcher, this great silver pitcher, but it had a pole attached to the bottom, and the pole went through a hole in the desk. So here's the pitcher, and there's some chap sitting under there, and we, they sort of go, okay, well, then the pitcher goes up, and someone's sending a signal to someone across the room, and then the pitcher, the guy raises it up on a thing, and then I push it down. <laughs> like this. But then, later on, in post-production, we erased the pole. Well, you know what was really fun to do was the chalk. Oh my, this was so much fun. The chalk. The, chalk. the, chalk. the, chalk. the, chalk. the method that really worked the best. Inside this piece of chalk was a magnet, a really strong magnet. And on the other side of the blackboard, was a guy who was writing backwards. So you could move the magnet on the back of the chalkboard and it would make the chalk move around on the front. <laughs> Somebody had to be behind the blackboard writing backwards, but we made it easier because we wrote all the letters on the back of the blackboard backwards so he could see what he had to do are hitting the trench ball. They're actually on sticks, and there are a couple guys off stage beating her with these erasers on sticks. <laughs> and all the kids were going crazy. There was chalk dust flying everywhere. Everybody was screaming. <laughs> and even though it looked like the trench ball was getting hurt, in fact, it was all, everybody was just really laughing because she was having a great time and the erasers were soft, so it all ended well. No trench balls were hurt in the making of the movie.